Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Stella Ray Herself podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I'm super excited. We have a guest this week. I'm going to be speaking with Teresa Lear Levine. She is an EFT specialist and practitioner, and we're going to learn all about EFT. And then we also did an EFT tapping video, which you can check out on her website. It'll be linked down below. If you enjoy the episode, don't forget to post a screenshot on your story, tag me so I can repost. Let me know your thoughts in a comment below, and let's just go ahead and get started. Hi, Teresa. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, my pleasure, Stella. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat. And I wanted to start out with just an introduction about you. I'd love for my audience to get to know you and get a feel for what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm Teresa Lear Levine. I am probably a little older than some of your audience, but I'm, I'm in my 40s. I live in Maryland and I have four kids. So my kids range in age from my youngest is five. I have a nine-year-old. I have a 12-year-old and I have a 17-year-old. So we we span quite the range with the kiddos. i um, been married to my husband for the last um, 14 years. We just had our 14th wedding anniversary. And I have been an EFT master practitioner now for several years also. And that is probably the modality we're going to be digging into a bit today. It was the most life-changing for me when I discovered it because um, I'll say this about myself. I am definitely a personal development junkie. So I, you know, I grew up always just having this inquiry about myself, wanting to understand my thoughts better, wanting to understand all sorts of things about myself better. And also coming up against a feeling that, gosh, no, I'm so smart. I know so much. I've collected all this information over the years, and yet I'm still stuck in so many ways in my life. And what do I do about that? And when I got into working more with energy, and everything is energy, then things really started to move and change and um, unfold for me in a way that I had never experienced before. And it just really made life a lot juicier. So tell us, what does EFT stand for? It stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. And a lot of people know it as tapping. So mm -hmm. they're the same thing. And it's been around for longer than most people realize. Um, as it's been known as Emotional Freedom Techniques, it's been around since the 90s. So um, quite a while. And there's tons of you know science behind the modality and evidence supporting its efficacy. And I personally have never worked with anything that got me through things, over things, around things faster than it does, because you really do get to move the energetic blockages that are preventing you from feeling your best. Do you remember your first experience with it or the first time you really realized like, wow, this is life changing? Yeah. And I mean, in the scheme of things, it wasn't terribly long ago. It was right before the pandemic hit. And I had heard about EFT plenty of times. I've, I've done all sorts of coaching and I've been helping women for over 25 years. So this just wasn't something that was part of my toolbox before then. But it would, it kind of would tap me on the shoulder at these weird times in my life. Like I would have a baby and then I would see like Olympians using EFT to like have great athletic performances. And I'm like, I just want to like lose a few pounds, feel better about myself and sleep through the night. Like this is not my modality. And I was failing to realize that this is something that could be used for anything that you can feel, whether it's physical, emotional, past, happening right now, future pace, like worry and anxiety, all of those things are it's equally effective on. So when I finally was willing to try it, I was at this retreat with a bunch of other, you know, women who are in different areas of coaching like myself. And they brought in an EFT practitioner to teach us just kind of, hey, this is how you can use this modality on anxiety and worry and things. And at that time, you know, mom of four, uh, my my baby was only, my little one was only a couple years old at that point, trying to, you know, work a business from home. And we were getting ready to go into the pandemic. It was, it was February of 2020. And I'm pretty sure on my way to that retreat, I actually got COVID. I didn't know it at the time. I was just because like, oh, I was I was driving from Maryland to Richmond for this retreat, a few hour drive, and I was almost all the way there. And I'm like, man, my throat's kind of closing up. I'm not feeling that good. I'm kind of tired. I'll just stop and get some, you know, cold medicine at the drugstore on the way. I'm gonna gonna make this happen. I was really excited to be with these women for the weekend, and make it work. But I just kept feeling worse and worse and worse. And when it came time to go to this session for this workshop. 
I was feeling lousy. Like I really just wanted to stay in bed, but I went anyway. And I'm so glad I did because while I definitely had anxiety and things to work on and it definitely made a difference, I also noticed that as I was going through the tapping sequence and saying the words and expressing the feelings and allowing my energy to move, that my head started to like, the congestion started to go away. The sore throat eased up. I regained actual physical energy. We had like a photo shoot to do after that. And I was like, oh, this is going to be awful. And I looked at the photos of myself and I'm like, you would never even know that I like was like next to death. But, you know, and that's the, the cool thing about EFT is that it has these borrowed benefits. So because it lowers your stress hormones and that can't just, you know, we can't just say, oh, we're just going to lower your stress hormones that have to do with anxiety. It lowers them over the course of everything. So as that cortisol, and things go down, you feel better everywhere. And Mm -hmm. as a practitioner, I absolutely love that because that means that as I work with people, sometimes on really deep, dark, crazy things, I get benefits from helping them do that work too. And I feel better. And at the end of a day of working with many clients, I'm still energized and ready to do it again the next day instead of feeling worn down and burnt out and, you know, all those things that we're all trying to not have happen to us. So how exactly does it work? It works using these channels in our body called meridians. So all of our energy flows through our body in this meridian system. If you've ever had a deep tissue massage or gone for acupuncture or even acupressure, this is along the same lines. Now, when something happens to somebody and it processes regularly through our nervous system and our body, we don't feel any dis-ease. There's no blockage or anything. But that same thing might happen to somebody else and be really traumatizing or cause an energetic blockage. Like let's say, you know, you and I both get chased by a dog or something and the dog's kind of aggressive or something. You're kind of like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, ah, and I'm kind of freaking out and I'm afraid the dog's going to bite me. Maybe the dog does bite me. And so then I have this fear going forward about dogs or what might happen, these beliefs that I'm, I'm coming up against that I've created based on this one circumstance. And so with EFT, you get to focus in on the problem in my example, it would be this fear of dogs, while also tapping on these meridian endpoints. And there's a sequence of them that has been proven to pretty much work on releasing anything that you put it up against. So it used to be they'd come up with these like algorithms of specific things that you would tap on certain amounts of times in certain areas and kind of go all over the place. And people paid like big money for an algorithm, like $10,000 back in the 80s um, uh, for just like one problem to be solved. And then it became recognized that this, this combination, basically the side of our hand, which we call the karate chop point, the top of our head, some areas around our eye, the top of our eyebrow, the side of our eye, under our eye, under our nose, under our mouth, our collarbone area, and under our arm. That combination in certain sequence, um, or even out of sequence, can really resolve a lot of well, any blockage that you, you apply the technique to appropriately. Yeah. So as we release those blockages, we feel better and the stress hormones go down, we get a new way of kind of a new perspective, a new way of framing the issues that we have and just kind of feel better. You know, a lot of people come to me and they're very charged by different things that are happening in their life or different events they've been through, bothersome memories, traumatic experiences, social anxiety, whatever it might be. And when they're done doing the work, there's almost this feeling of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> you know, like it's, it just kind of goes from being like supercharged to like, yeah, I, I'm done with that. Yeah. And it's such an empowering difference, especially since the work comes through your own hands, your own body, your own voice, talking about these things that have once been seemingly insurmountable obstacles. So it's a way to regulate your body, would you say? Yeah, it's nervous system regulation. Yeah. Would you say this is... Almost like, I don't, I mean, I guess you could say lifestyle or like a longer term thing to do to regulate or maybe and or can it help in the moment, you know, if someone is feeling super stressed out about something or what would you say is more beneficial? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I always say it's kind of like, you know, if you were to get hurt, you wouldn't deny yourself a Band-Aid. And in cases of like, maybe you have some public speaking to do that you're anxious about, or you're gonna be spending time, we're getting to the holidays, so people get all this anxiety about being around family or different you know, social circumstances and things. In those cases, you can do it, take the edge off, feel a lot better, 
proceed in a in a different way. Like you show up differently to situations and circumstances once you've regulated your nervous system. And that just has to be experienced. And at the same token, when you have the time to go deeper or be guided by a professional, which is sometimes important when the situations are more complex or the trauma is more complex, then mm. you can go deeper into like, hmm, why do I have this fear of public speaking? What's going on with my family? What do I need to resolve here with these social situations that have me on edge? And that's more of like a deep wound clean out, you know? So yeah. you can band-aid it in the moment and you can kind of do something more deep that will resolve it uh, when you have the time or the ability to do that. Um, EFT works in a very permanent way when you get to the root cause. So mm -hmm. if you just use it as a band-aid all the time, you will still find those same things likely are going to come back up for you repeatedly. If you can work it down to the root cause, you're done with it. What would you say are the best everyday habits to practice regulation and de-stress or work through anxiety, you know, especially in our modern society? So many people are stressed out by social media and like you said, the holidays and work and just all of these demands that are put on us. Boundaries are big, but mm. boundaries are also really hard for people. So all of, all of this answer that I'm going to give you basically comes down to you can use emotional freedom techniques for all of these things. Like I use yeah. emotional freedom techniques to help my clients create better boundaries because usually mm -hmm. our lack of boundaries has to do with feeling unsafe in some way about, you know, about creating them so we can work through that. Another thing I love to do is just good deep breaths. Like we forget to breathe. I don't know how it is that we, we do, but I know that there are some days when it gets to be like the afternoon, late afternoon, evening and I take a deep breath and I'm like, gee, is that really the first time I've actually like filled my lungs completely and taken an exhale? Yeah. So it happens to all of us, but I love to do like, if you take your hands to the um, either side of like um, your super sternal notch, which is kind of like the middle of your chest for people that are listening and you just press in really hard and inhale, you get such a deeper breath as you're pressing in there than you do if you don't. Sometimes you have to kind of compare, but I just love taking a deep breath that way. And just, I don't know, something about putting your hands on yourself while you breathe, it just kind of embodies the whole thing a little bit better. But breathing, EFT, the beauty of EFT is that you can do a round in just a couple minutes if you need to, or it can extend out to, you know, some rounds will go like 10 minutes or so. And um, I know we talked about it before, but what I'd love to do after this is we'll do a tapping round on something that, you know, both you and your listeners will really enjoy. And that will be my my gift to, to your listeners to send them this video of you and I doing this tapping. And that's how you're going to get hands on because it's one thing for me to sit here and tell you about nervous system regulation or tell you about these meridian endpoints or how this works or whatever, but it's a totally different ball game when you actually do it and feel that shift and that difference. That's what makes it click for people. It's the whole reason why when I would see it and I would read about EFT for all those years and I kept saying, no, 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 I never tried it. I never mm -hmm. actually like did the hands-on experience. And once I did, I was hooked. So hopefully your listeners will go grab that for themselves after they're done listening to this episode. Yeah, I'm so excited to experience it myself. I've done acupuncture and other things, some more closely related than others, but I've never done specifically the tapping. So I'm excited to have that experience. Yeah, a lot of people call it, it's like psychological acupressure. Is, is kind of the best way to sum up what EFT is. This is a little different question. I feel like the answer can vary in this question depending on who I might ask. So I wanted to get your perspective. How do you tell between anxiety and intuition? I've never actually thought of the two together. Because when I think of intuition, I think of just good, pure guidance and something that you feel a calling to follow. And... I don't feel like intuition and fear and anxiety and fear are in the same family are linked. Our intuitive guidance comes from the gut. So that is our gut instinct. And our gut is literally like a second brain. So intuition isn't this, you know, woo woo thing that doesn't exist. We literally have neuroreceptors and things in that area of our body that are helping us to respond to things at all different times. So I think and intuition is something that I'm, I love. I love helping 
my clients to develop theirs because I think it's a voice, especially as women, that we have suppressed or quieted. And it's the part of ourselves that we really, really need to honor and really need to listen to. And in an unapologetic manner too. I mean, I know some people will be like, oh, I had this feeling that I, you know, I shouldn't have taken this turn and then there was a car accident or I was in a car accident or whatever and, oh, I knew better and I didn't listen to my voice. Or the other side of the situation is I listened to the voice and I just got where I was going and then people don't feel rewarded like there was any, like, you know, it's like, well, life just proceeded as normal. Yes, that's that's what we're hoping for here is just, you know, right. a, another positive outcome. Um, we don't necessarily ever get that, like, tap on the shoulder that says, like, yeah, you just avoid a disaster or, like, right. this was such a better decision than the other way. And I think part of it is just realizing there's no wrong decisions in life. There's There's no wrong decisions. And because I know so many women wait to do things and they hesitate and it, either because they expect it's going to somehow become more perfect, the timing will be better, or they will somehow then know that this is the thing. And intuition can guide us with a lot of that, but also just kind of leaning into that, that self-trust. That's what intuition is to me. It's, it's self-trust and just knowing that I can trust myself. I can trust the universe. I can trust that everything is happening for me, not to me, and that all is well. I like that. Yeah, I like the not seeing them as even related. Yeah. That's a question I see a lot on social media um, of people not really knowing how to decipher between the two, but I like your answer. I feel like that is pretty clear. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> It just came to me intuitively. <laughs> <laughs> what are the best practices to strengthen your intuition, if there's any specific? I think it's looking at the places where you don't trust yourself and mm. figuring out what those blockages are and then surgically removing them one by one with, with some good uh, energetic release and, and nervous system regulation. That definitely helps. And also just experience. The more that you, you know, it's not going to be comfortable when you first start basically leaning into yourself if you're not used to doing things that way, if you're not used to trusting yourself. So sometimes it's also a matter of just becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable and realizing that, you know what, not everything's meant to be comfortable. And sometimes you just got to take the leap and know that it's going to be a little, you know, weird along the way. I saw this quote once that I think it was on a therapist page on Instagram. And it was something like, once you can sit with, I think they were talking about anxiety, but you could say discomfort of any kind. Once you can sit with discomfort, it can no longer control you. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of things that we all could use to learn to just be able to sit with. Because when you realize that you're the only thing here that you can control, and we all would really love to be able to control everybody else and everything else, and we can't, then, and we also have to kind of question sometimes, like, why does it matter? Like, why, why am I so worried about this? Or what if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't? Is there, is there really any major loss? And just kind of get comfortable with the possibilities. I feel like that kind of goes into perfectionism as well, which is, I feel can be a form of anxiety. But is that something that EFT can help with as well? Absolutely. And I can say that firsthand as a recovering perfectionist. Um, so, and I... I myself have dealt with a lot of like high functioning anxiety, which is very like perfectionism driven. And uh, a lot of my clients do too. So, you know, if you're, if you're one of those people who is propelled by like the go, 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 and, you know, always kind of needing to have your hand in something, um, but also like not wanting to release things out to the world because they're not quite right. Yeah. Um, then yeah. Yeah. yeah EFT exactly. is really good at, at working on that. How would you recommend somebody get started with EFT? Obviously, the video that we're going to create is a great place to get hands on and give that a try. Um, I've got lots of videos, too, out there that people can tap along and try it. But EFT really likes specificity. So if you're doing tap along videos or trying things that people have pre-recorded, they might not speak to exactly what you're going through. And I say that because sometimes people will try EFT just like they're pre-recording or something and like, ah, nothing happened. Like, yeah, but 
if you were to actually work with somebody one-on-one and actually be speaking directly to your problems or to learn how to really do it yourself so that you can draw those things out of yourself, then there's no doubt you'd, you'd have a shift. It's just sometimes you're not speaking to exactly what the problem is for yourself. And sometimes people don't know what the problem is for themselves. And that's where, you know, working with a practitioner can be really helpful. I know that, you know, even as a master practitioner, I work with coaches and mentors and things all the time to improve myself. You know, we can't see the things that are right in front of our own nose most of the time, even if we, you know, know better, even if we have the knowledge. It's just we, our subconscious is sneaky. You know, it does a really good job of protecting us and I thank it for that. But also other people can see those little things so much easier than you can yourself and just pull them out of you. Or they might have just a different a different perspective that's so beneficial. Awesome, yeah, I'm so excited for our video. What are your favorite self-care things or maybe routines to do, especially in the colder winter months? I love skincare, especially my, my skin tends to get very dry this time of year. So anything where I can like rehydrate my skin, I, I love. I love anything that's warm and cozy, a good long bath. Um, you know, if I can get one by myself, great. If not, throw a few kids in there with me. and. <laughs> And that's fine too. Um, I love to crawl under the covers and do like guided hypnosis or things like that and just um, kind of half nap, half <laughs> go into trance and just enjoy that. And I, I am going to love doing cold plunges at some point. I ha- I've not figured that one out, but I'm going to. I'm like the person that like can't get in the shower until like the water is like nice and warm and I keep going, how am I going to do this? But I, I've heard too many good things to not make that like a bucket list thing that I'm going to figure out how to enjoy. And it's so good for nervous system regulation too. Last question, last main question I have for you is what is your favorite part about what you do? Oh goodness, it's probably the the transformation I get to witness. It's such an honor and such a privilege to have people open up to me in the way that they do. I mean, the things that people share with me, it's like, uh, it just touches me so deeply that they're willing to do that and that they're willing to kind of like just let me get in there and help them work it out and everything else. But yeah, when, when I'm able to help somebody to get through something that has held them back a lot of times for way too long, that just feels so good. Like mm-hmm. the messages and things that I get and being, yeah, being able to truly help people heal is probably yeah. my favorite part of what I do. Yeah, that's a great feeling. That's amazing. Um, Well, where can people find you? And I also wanted to ask if you are currently taking new clients. Um, Best place to find me is my website, TeresaLearLevine.com. And if you guys want the video, you can go to ThePrivateSessions.com. And you'll not only get the one that Stella and I are going to record, but you'll get a bunch of others too. It's an amazing resource full of awesome tapping videos. And at the time, yes, I am taking new clients. That does change and fluctuate throughout the year. But um, when you go to my website, if I am taking new clients, there's usually an opportunity on there where you can book a breakthrough session with me. And those are just, those are fun, guys. Like, it's just so awesome to spend a little time together and I will get to know you, your challenges, what's going on in your life, and give you some great insights. Like, If nothing else, even if you don't want to work with me and we're not a a fit, then um, you're going to walk away with some awesome insights and some things that you can apply in your own self-work. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on. And we're about to record our own tapping video. So you guys should definitely check that out. I'll link it down below. But yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Stella. I love your show and I appreciate you having me on today. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. Let me know who you would like me to speak with next. What topics you want me to discuss next week. Again, don't forget to share on your story. If you enjoyed the episode, tag me. I will repost and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye everyone.